This is to me, you know, one of the key, the key aspects of the class. The, the deep connection to the love that you get, you feel love in a way that you've never felt it before. And I feel that that's one of the key aspects. You, fall, you connect to this love, then you love yourself more, you love others, it's just like, a, it, it's, it's contagious. Uh, I don't want to be a skeptic, uh, you know, if this is, if this works, I want to feel it, I want to experience it, and hey man, that's what happens. So, it's like my, my skepticism, when I started seeing the results, the really strong, strong physical results, I think, wow, this works, this, there's something to this, and people start vibrating and shaking, and, and now it's happening even online, it works. Well, you know, the coronavirus has uh, got us locked down in Brazil. We had a full schedule, you know, we, we get uh, Europe, uh, we've got Egypt, uh, Hong Kong, everything all scheduled. And of course, that's all changed now. Almost every weekend we're, we're doing a Zoom, but we do it for different regions, different countries. Because of the COVID-19, we're all kind of put in a situation where we've had to create this new way of working with people and the technology's there. We're seeing so many positive things happen with this. Now, we do know that, you know, there's a lot of suffering that goes along with it as well. But I do feel that once you kind of get to a, a level of awakening with all of this, that you'll understand you know, what's happening on the planet. It's a planetary awakening right now that's happened. This is what's been predicted for thousands of years and it's happening now. Yeah, so I met you probably four years ago is my guess. It was a Wednesday evening um, and you had a small like three hour session. And it was, it was yeah. one of the more bizarre, magical experiences I've ever had. <laughs> really? It was really amazing in purpose in in, per, in person, but what's going to happen on Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it, man. I mean, the energy is palpable. I mean, you can almost cut it. It's yeah, it's yeah. Spreaded, and then you feel it, and you almost get overwhelmed. It's really very surprising. One of the things I wanted to do was always visit the pyramids. Being an architect, I thought, well, you know, if if there's something to this whole pyramid energy thing and I'm an architect, I can use this in my practice. And so what better experience would be than to go and do the meditation in the great pyramid, you know, the biggest, the biggest pyramid. And so I did have a wonderful experience there. I actually snuck in. Um, well, I didn't sneak in. I went with a tour and I just found an open passageway. They left the lock off one of the little passageways and I just crawled in there and hid and hid and they locked me in for the night. Um, <laughs> and uh, so then I was able to experience laying in the sarcophagus for the, for meditating for, for the whole night and had a wonderful um, kind of awakening experience with it. Basically what it does, whatever's inside of you, it magnifies it. it Okay. And uh, what happened to me was is that when I started doing the meditation, um, I started hearing these sounds and uh, I do an inner sound meditation. So I thought, wow, everything's working good. But it ended up being mosquitoes. And I, I had no idea that there would be mosquitoes inside the Great Pyramid. You know, it's like, come on, we're in the middle of the desert and everything. But I guess because the rain would drip down and form little pools, somehow mosquitoes got in there. And I didn't have any way to kind of protect myself when I was meditating, except that I did come prepared and I brought a roll of toilet paper. And so I kind of was, I didn't even think about the connection, but I just wrapped myself up in toilet paper. Oh, God, really? <laughs> so after I kind of like wrapped all myself all up in the toilet paper, oh. and the from the mosquitoes, then I laid down in the sarcophagus. And then it's like I started to hear these footsteps. And if you know the design of the pyramid, they have this big grand gallery where there's steps going up. And I could hear somebody walking up the steps and then I thought, oh no, I'm gonna get caught. Now, that's where my fear came from. Because if I get caught in the pyramid, 
I'm going to jail. Right. And so, you know, I'm listening to these steps coming up in my hiding place. I had to leave the King's chamber and go out into this gallery so they would see me. So I thought, what do I do? You know, they're coming. And so I thought, I'll just lie here. Maybe they won't look in the sarcophagus. And so I'm laying there listening to these footsteps coming closer and closer and closer. And then all of a sudden I realized that they didn't turn the lights on and it's pitch black in there. You know, I mean, I had my flashlight and everything, but I mean, it's total black. There's nothing. And, um, and so then it, it's like, well, wait a minute. If it's not human, then what is this sound coming towards me? And I could literally feel these footsteps walking towards me, coming into the king's chamber, walking towards me. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's some kind of the spirit of a pharaoh coming after me, you know. Then I kind of like apologize, say, sorry, pharaoh, you know, I'm laying in your sarcophagus, you know. <laughs> And, um, so so were, was there a sense of relief because you knew at that point you weren't going to jail or was there a sense of anxiety because well you know, then I realized that it's something or entities or uh, you know yeah then and then another level of fear did come in and really I could feel it I was very conscious so it was like wow you're really scared right now Patrick and um, and then it was just like you you know you get to the point where you realize that you could die. You know, it could it could kill you, whatever it is. You know, all these thoughts are going through your head. And then I just said to myself at, at that at the peak of the fear, I just said, that's what you came here for. Just relax. And then it's like, boom, you know, then I had this experience. And if you think about it in our class, what do we work with? We work with your feelings. You work with a lot of your emotions you, and you can work with your fear. And a lot of the really big um, initiation experiences, especially in Egypt, were all based on facing your fear, facing your death. And so it was like I had this initiation, you know, facing my, my death, and then it opened up. I mean, yeah, I, I've, I've experienced a lot of different types of energy work, um, but none seem to bring out um, the things that I've seen at, at your all love workshops you know when you're connecting to your higher self your soul energy uh, whatever it is you want to name it it's a higher vibration and your physical body is not used to it so that's the reaction that happens interesting um, okay so there can be this shaking um emotions can start to come out you know you can like you were said you were laughing so whatever emotion that's inside will start to come out some people laugh some people cry some people get angry some people go into fear some people go into a massive uh, love experience so um, all of these things start to happen what do you feel this energy actually does i mean how does your i mean i know your program really helps a lot of people but how do you describe it to people as to something that could be helpful to them? Okay. Well, I think originally, you know, when I started all of this, it was all just to help with my meditation connecting in a spiritual way. And even if you look at the, with, with the Reiki, that's just how it started. It's a spiritual path. It's all spiritual stuff. But then you get kind of other results when you have these connections. There might be physical healing that takes place um, as a result of this energy flow that's happening, of this emotional release that's happened. I've, I've had a lady, you know, she had a tumor and she did this big emotional release and all of a sudden, you know, the, when it, she was going in to get prepped for the surgery and they said, well, there's no tumor anymore. Wow. So um, these things happen. Now, of course, legally, we can't say anything about that. So I don't make a big deal out of the, um, I don't advertise, you know, the, the healing aspects as much because um, basically, you know, the medical establishment has made it illegal for anybody to say anything about that. So as far as anybody's concerned, we're just doing spiritual work and if healing happens, it happens. It's really amazing that this stuff is not really taught much in medical school. You know, here we have this just absolutely incredible, you might say, spiritual side 
but the medical science, now we'll say science, really hasn't adopted it. Like for instance, the we don't even have the words and the terminology like kundalini, um, samadhi, nirvana. Um, other cultures have words for this, but we don't even have the words for it in the English language. Right. And and they don't even uh, they're not even studying it. Now we do have a lot of doctors, a lot of psychologists actually coming to my class. It's a, it's a, it's wonderful. So the interest is there. And I think once the interest is there, then it'll start being taught more. I did my 40 day meditation. Um, now I've done some fasting before where I don't, didn't eat for like 10 days, but this was 40 days. And I know people that say they don't even eat. And so there's all kinds of amazing possibilities. It's like you're talking about the rabbit hole. It's a lot deeper than you think you might even imagine. You know, just imagine if all of a sudden, you know, we realize that, hey, we don't even need to eat. And especially now in this time with the COVID-19 thing, just imagine that if you have the absolute belief that in, in faith and trust to know that you are invincible that even if your body dies, that you still continue. Then you walk around the planet in a completely different way. You don't, you don't have to walk around in fear anymore. And even if none of it's true, if you believe it, you'll have a much better life anyway. The heart thing's really the most important. You know, if you can live in this love, it, it, you know, it's just like if you can be in the state of love, your immune systems can be better, you're going to feel better, and that's what's most important.